Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Wienbridge Oscillator. So let's start the quick review of the Barkhausen Stability Criterion. This tells us that in order for a circuit to oscillate, the loop gain must initially be greater than 1 and then fall back to 1 in order to maintain oscillation, and that the loop phase must be an integer multiple of 360 degrees. In other words, we need positive feedback. So we can build an oscillator based on a classic Wien bridge, seen right here. And essentially, this is a, your basic H-shaped bridge. Um, on one side, we just have a couple of resistors to create a voltage divider, and on the other side, we have RC networks. So the resistor value is the same, the capacitor value is the same. These values do not have to match. However, the two resistors on this side do wind up being in a 2 to 1 ratio is shown here. So essentially what, ad, what, ends, what ends up happening is uh, at the critical frequency where x sub c is equal to r, this section will have a phase angle of minus 45 degrees, as will this section. However, being in parallel, this combined impedance will be half of this value. So when we do a voltage divider on this, what we'll wind up with is uh, this value divided by this value plus this, which is basically a ratio of one-third, and we have an angle of uh, minus 45 minus a minus 45, which gives us zero. So at the critical frequency, we find uh, a zero-degree phase angle and essentially a loss of one-third, which matches what we have over here, right? Uh, this resistor over this resistor plus that one is, again, one-third at an angle of zero. If we go to a lower frequency, this cap opens up, and we get uh, considerably more loss. On the other hand, at very high frequencies, this cap shorts, and again, we get more loss. So we see a peaking response right at the critical frequency. Now we can check this uh, straightforward just by looking at the section of it, which we have right there. So I just have that section of the RCs. And what we're going to do is plot the output across frequency. We're going to do a Bode plot and see what ends up happening over here which I have conveniently done already. And this is what we get out, right? So I'm just, I'm just using a standard Bode plot on this from the, uh, from the AC analysis menu, right? AC transfer characteristic, we get us a Bode plot. So in any case, uh, we can see with the amplitude of it, right, peaking broadly and the phase going from positive to negative, right? So if we grab a couple of, um, little probes over here, cursors, and we swing this around. Um, if we do a calculation on this, this will work out to uh, about 1.59 uh, kilohertz for the break. As a matter of fact, I very sneakily put it in over here, right? So here's our critical frequency. Um, we can see the impedances, right? There's a two to one ratio. When we do the voltage divider, we come up with this one third at an angle of zero, which works out to about a negative 9.5 dB. And as I'm swinging around over here, right, you can see here's our dB loss and there's our associated frequency. All right, so as I swing around, when we get into that 1.59 area, okay, we can see that we're, you know, we're getting this approximately 9.5 uh, dB loss. And if we verify that down here on the phase shift, and right, I'm just going to be looking for zero on this one. Right, and there's our cross right around there, and there you can, you can see the 1.59, right? So at that critical frequency, we wind up with the maximum output signal and the zero phase, which is what we need for the um, Barkhausen criterion. So what we're going to do is uh, take this, this section over here, and put this inside of a uh, uh, feedback loop with an op amp. So basically, Switching back to this guy, um, this whole thing is going to wind up as part of our op amp circuit. The differential voltage where I've thrown in this voltmeter is essentially going to be the input to the op amp. And here we go. So I want you to forget about these diodes for just a sec. So here's our op amp. Here is the uh, Wien bridge section that we were talking about, right? The, the resistor capacitor combo. It's coming from the output. And we can see we're tapping off that. This point A is going into the positive input of the uh, op amp. Now, 
the other resistors here, right, this is a standard series parallel configuration, but these correspond, these resistors right here correspond to these two resistors in the bridge itself, right? So this R4 down here is essentially RI, and R3 is the RF feedback resistor, okay? Um, in this case, 5K, and then we have a 9K, and then like, what's going on with this? Well, remember the first uh, criteria of, of the, uh, the Brockhausen criteria, the first one is we need a gain of greater than one to start oscillation, but then it has to fall back to one to maintain. So theoretically, we would need perfectly a, a 10K here, right? Got a 5K and a 10K would be exactly what we need. Um, if the problem is the gain, um, you know, in a, in a real world circuit, you're never going to get exactly, exactly, you know, a gain of 3.00000 forever, um, you know, out, out of, out of real world circuit. So we do a little bit of a modification here. Um, what we start off with is a 9K in series with a 2K, which gives us 11. And for low signals, low signal levels, these diodes are off and we literally get 11K. So we have a gain of slightly over three. But as the signal rises, these diodes start to turn on, one for the positive direction and one for the negative direction. And that impedance, that dynamic impedance of the diode winds up being in parallel with the 2K and therefore decreases the resistance. So what ends up happening is as the signal grows, the total feedback resistance starts to drop off until eventually it naturally sort of settles right at the value that we would need. In this case, 10K, but in, you know, in a real world circuit, we would have tolerance on these components. So, you know, whatever it would need to be is what it would fall back to be. So if we now look at a, um, a transient response, we should get a nice sine wave, good size sine wave at, um, you know, approximately 1.59 kilohertz, right? So we would come up and uh, do our transient analysis over here, which, you know, no surprise, I've already done. Um, and I have delayed the input now you can see this is starting at 10 uh, milliseconds rather than zero because there is going to be a turn on transient. We are going to see, you know, this a wave starting at zero and then sort of building up. So I've just delayed it so we can get to the steady state response of it. But in fact, we do see a nice sine wave here, right? We've got nearly a 10 volt peak out of this and um, we could measure you know, exactly what these um, time period happens to be. So I'm just going to go to the zero crosses here. Right, I can't get it exact. Um, but, you know, if we look at our differential here, it's a, about 636 change microseconds, well, which is going to give us 1.59 uh, and, and change kilohertz, right? So pretty much what we uh, expected. Now, it's probably not going to be perfect because, of course, we're not going to have exactly zero phase in the op amp. This is going to be just maybe slightly off. Uh, but we are getting a pretty nice sine wave out of this thing, okay? And uh, there we go with our Ween Bridge oscillator.